from a love and a respect for one another, we're trying to do the same thing with the environment. You know, Dan has made a reference, this generation is the green generation. Uh, we hope we encourage other people to, to do the same thing or something similar. Today I'm excited to introduce an amazing company and leader. The company is Texas Nameplate, and the leader I'm referring to is Dale Crownover. Now, a few months ago, we were fortunate enough to shoot an entire Gemba Academy Live episode at Texas Nameplate, where we learned all about their journey with sustainability. Specifically, we learned how they recycle, rejuvenate, and reclaim many of the things they use to make their product. Now we've since released this entire video based episode. So if you're a Gemba Academy subscriber, be sure to check it out in the, uh, the Gemba Academy Live at the Gemba section of our website. Now with this said, today, I wanna share the audio portions of two different conversations from the episode. Now in the first clip, you'll hear my opening discussion with Dale, where he introduces what he calls the, uh, the triple bottom line, which is people, planet, and profit. And then in the second clip, we go to the very end of the episode where I actually decided to take a bold risk as I asked some pretty tough questions in order to really understand why they're so passionate about this topic. Now, in that last clip, you'll hear from Dale and his son, Dan. And uh, now show notes for this episode, which will include a link to sign up for a free trial to Gemba Academy. So if you're not a subscriber and you want to check out this full Gemba Academy live episode, you definitely can free of charge. Just sign up for a, a three day trial and you can do that on our normal GembaAcademy.com website. Just kind of scroll to the bottom. You'll see a button or you could go to the show notes for this episode, which will be at GembaPodcast.com. And this is episode 229. All right. Enough for me. Let's get to the show. All right, well, welcome to uh, Lancaster, Texas, and at Texas Nameplate. Dale? How are you, sir? Thank you so much for having us come in. Great. It's been, uh, we've been talking about this for several years, and we've been out to visit you a couple times, and super excited for today to finally get to introduce, uh, you know, the Gibb Academy community to, to Texas Nameplate. Now, I think many folks who are involved with AME or anything like that probably already heard of Texas Nameplate because you're a pretty famous uh, keynote speaker and all that kind of stuff, podcast rock star and all the rest of it, right? <laughs> well, we, all you guys make me look good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, um, Dale, I want to do, just in, the, in this first video, I want you to just tell us a little bit about your company, maybe its history, and then kind of towards the end of this, let's talk about just what the folks are, can expect for the rest of this episode. Who are we gonna, what are we going to see and who are we going to talk to? Well, um, my, my father started Texas Nameplate in uh, 1946, uh, so we've been around a long time. Um, I'm second generation. This is the only job I've ever had. I'm real happy both my two sons, millennials, are working uh, with us now, so <laughs> okay. you'll get to meet them. Yeah. Um, and we make metal nameplates, nameplates you see on hot water heaters, uh, air conditioners, uh, lawnmowers, any type of a, a nameplate. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a good business. Uh, not a lot of people know much about the nameplate industry, uh, but we use a lot of acids and uh, we, we use a lot of materials that some people would consider uh, to be uh, not good chemicals, solvents, or mm. hazardous uh, materials. But yeah. through the years, um, you know, we've, uh, we've used, you know, to, to make a nameplate, we've got very involved in a lot of different processes. and. Uh, you know, for many years, uh, it was about quality, and uh, obviously, like so many organizations, AME and Shingo, everybody got focused on on quality, which we did. We, mm -hmm. uh, I, I call myself a, a Baldridge nerd. I yep. really went down to performance excellence of, with Baldridge. Yep. Um, and that really uh, helped our organization. You and, won the uh, award a couple of times. Won the award a couple of times. Yep. Uh, very proud of that, but like anything, uh, I, I think Lean has taught me, or AME, we can always do a little bit better. Yeah. Um, and back in our industry and having all these high-risk materials, we got concerned about you know the future and and um, what could we do with all this. So, you know, I'm real happy now, Ron. What I really want to do, I want to share the story about uh, a sustainable organization. I, I consider. Texas nameplate to be a sustainable uh, business mm -hmm. and what that really means that we are 
very focused on triple bottom line. Uh, I'll be honest, I didn't really know what triple bottom line was till not long ago. So what is it? Well, it's when you identify people, planet, and profit. People, planet, and profit. Yeah, the, the three Ps. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I would say a lot of organizations do that. They probably don't do it as systematic as what uh, I'd like to try to portray in this uh, interview we're going to do today, that there is a real conscious effort how we uh, identify the planet, how we identify the people, and obviously we all need to make profit. Mm -hmm. But I think what we're going to show you, I hope, to the audience is that uh, when you deal with environmental concerns and you deal with people concerns, when you do all that, obviously you're going to make a profit. And it's, it's all about sustainability. And I really do think uh, particularly so with the uh, the millennials. I love the millennials. I have two of them. I raised two of them. Uh, you could consider these the, the green generation. Mm -hmm. uh, Seventy. They they claim right now that seventy five percent of the millennials will make a purchase from an organization that is sustained, mm -hmm. which I think is huge. So today, that's what I really want to share with everybody that our doors are open and. Uh, we're serious about this, and we really hope that we can encourage other uh, entrepreneurs to do the same thing. And, yeah. and Tell us a little bit about your dad. Tell well, us about, about why he started this company. And uh, now I'm sure he's watching down on you right now. He's got to be very proud of what you've done here. Dale, w what do you think he would say if, if he could... Uh, if he could be here well, today. To of course, I, I love my dad, like so many people. I had the opportunity to work with my dad for mm -hmm. 50 plus years. Ironic, he just, he's just he been gone 10 years. Uh, I was lucky to be his son. Mm -hmm. uh, that generation, he was born in the 20s, so you know they were the, back in the de Depression. So his idea of running a business, uh, he told me there were only three things I had to do, Ron. He said I need to be good to my people, be good to my customers and don't be greedy. And I've always remembered that. You can read all these books about how to run a business, but I've always remembered those traits mm -hmm. about my dad. My dad was a people person. He wanted to do the right thing. And what I think you're gonna see, I hope you see in this interview, that what we're doing on this sustainability, uh, we weren't asked to do any of this. We did this on our own. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to what my dad always kind of said, you work at it hard, and you'll have people that'll follow you, and you be good to these people. What do you mean? You work at it hard, and you'll have people who follow you. You be a good leader. You be a good leader. Don't just be a old demander. You go do this and that. Be a good leader to these people. If they get to do a good job, compliment these people on this job. If if you make more money, give these people a little piece of the pie. Just do the right thing. Um, he was a good businessman. Um, he wasn't interested in being big. He wanted to be better. Hmm. And I think that's why we probably went down the path with the Malcolm Baldridge. Mm -hmm. we, we didn't want to be big. We wanted to be very good at what we do. And and I, my dad, as he got older, I could tell, and now that so I'm 65 years old now too, but now I look back when my dad was my age and I could really tell that he he really wanted to help others. Mm -hmm. And as you get older in life, you really start thinking about a legacy. And we're all going to go one day, and mm -hmm. I don't think anybody uh, discounts the idea of what, what the people going to say about me. And I'm not doing all this just for that, but I am really interested in, in what Texas Nameplate could be for somebody else and how we could help them. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's where my dad would be proud of, of our reputation, uh, not that what our sales are and not, you know, what our, you know, our expectations as far as profitability, mm -hmm. but are we making an impact? Mm -hmm. And again, I hope in this interview today that we can invite big companies, little companies, anybody to really, really make a real conscious effort to identify the environment and their people. Okay, give us a quick overview of what we're going to see today and who we're going to talk to. Well, I hope what you see is a, an organization that is uh, having fun. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I hope you'll see that it's clean, it's organized. Of course, we have a brand new facility that we're very, very proud of. 
Got an uh, eye scrubber machine that the I eye scrubber see. is uh, we in fact we just got a, a inquiry from Australia somebody wanting to buy our, our eye scrubber mm -hmm. uh, you'll see a little bit about that um, you'll meet the, the, inter the people you interview you get to interview our youngest son Dan uh, mm -hmm. of course I'm proud of both both the boys uh, Dan is kind of taking more of an administrative role. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a millennial. I'm real proud of <laughs> where he's going. And, yeah. and you got to understand, Ron, when when he he's a graduate of Tech, Texas Tech, got his master's, but guns up, right? guns up, guns yeah. Up. <laughs> and and when as I look back, when he came to visit us, and he'd bring his friends, and I I listened to their dialogue and their conversations, mm -hmm. and I could really I got impressed with how these people think. Mm -hmm. Uh, the millennials are our driving force, and people my age, the entrepreneurs my age, the baby boomers, whoever, they need to really get mindful about this generation because mm -hmm. they, they want to fix the mess that we've probably helped create. Yeah. Uh, so you'll get to talk to Dan, and, and I think he'll confirm. Uh, he has really given me personally in this company a lot of support mm -hmm. that what we're doing on this sustainability. You'll see uh, we have a separate building that we have our chemicals stored in, but what you'll really see in there are three major projects where we recycle our water. We recycle 450,000 gallons of water a year. Wow. You'll see our rejuvenation. We're one of the very few nameplate companies that rejuvenate our acids, 70%. You'll see our solvent reclamation room where we, re, uh, we reclaim about 95% of our solvent. The ice scrubber you talked about, has zero discharge on VOCs. We got an exhaust fan that we put on it, probably cost three thousand dollars. We don't even turn it on because mm. there's really no VOCs. Mm -hmm. So you'll see some of that. We're paperless. I'm very happy with the paperless situation. I, I encourage a lot of organizations if you if you want to say you're green, which I think is very very important from a brand. The easiest best way to say you're green is to go paperless. Mm -hmm. Now, the challenge is going to be the, your culture. You just got to have the right people. But if you get more and more millennials, because they'll do it. I was happy. Dan, the youngest son you'll meet, uh, we did a statistic just a couple of weeks ago. 40% of our people at Texas Nameplate are millennials. Mm. And what is interesting about that, that from this green concept, is that now that we, we are attracting these people, and this is why I think people my age as leaders need to really focus on now we are attracting them, but what an organization needs to really do is look for how you're going to retain these people. Mm -hmm. They're not going to stay around if you're throwing everything in the dumpster. They right. just don't think like that. Yeah. So those are just some of the things that you see, and um, we're very proud of it. And you'll meet Ron and Ronnie. Uh, they're a little younger than I am. Of course, everybody is. <laughs> uh, but they're, they were the ones that did all this. They put the pipes together. Uh, Ron, it was a lot of his ideas uh, to, to do the rejuvenation. They took a lot of pride in this. Mm -hmm. I never told them, you know, go do this, do this. I think they knew where I was going with a lot of this. When we built this new facility, we took advantage that we could do a lot of this stuff, mm -hmm. that we could recycle our water, we could rejuvenate, we could do all this. And these guys made it happen. And you'll see a lot of pride from these guys. All right, so I'm back here with, with Dan Hi, Ron. and Dale again. So, gentlemen, we've had a great day. And again, I want to thank you for allowing us to come in and invade your property with our video team. <laughs> and, you know, the makeup wasn't that awkward, was it? No, just kidding. <laughs> it just took a while for me. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. So I, what I wanted to do in, in this final chat, gentlemen, is just one thing I've been trying to figure out. I've been here a couple times now and talked to you, Dale, several times. and. One thing I'm just really trying to trying to put my finger on, and I haven't done it yet, and I've been waiting for this this shot here to, to ask you guys, is you, you talk a lot about what it is and some of the reasons, some of the reasons why, but something tells me that there's something deeper within, you know, the soul of this company of why you guys are so passionate about sustainment. And, and, and to me, I, I just, I'm not buying, I'm just going to call you, I'm not buying all the stuff about rags and this and that. I think there's something deeper going on. And maybe you haven't even articulated it to yourselves. Maybe you have. 
But I'm just curious if you could maybe share a little bit, you know, kind of from inside of, of where this is coming from. Because yeah. it's not normal behavior, unfortunately, yeah. you know, for, for companies to, to behave the way you guys are behaving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I think, uh, I think you are right that maybe we haven't articulated quite our thoughts on it all. But what I think the foundation of it is, is that in our hearts, and we believe in all of our, our team's heart, is that outside of just the green aspects, we just want to do the right thing. We want to treat our customers right. We want to treat each other right. We want to treat our families right. We want to come into this place, treat our coworkers right. That's in our heart. And we ultimately, we just want to do the right thing. And so when this green projects and this green initiative kind of came up, whatever the first project was, it was a no brainer because it was the right thing to do. And so I think that's what it all ties back to is just to just absolutely, it's so simple. We're just wanting to do the right thing that that's what's in our heart. That's what, the, how this company was founded. That's in all the team's heart out there. When we're, whether, when we're making a nameplate, let's make it right. Mm -hmm. Let's come in here with a good attitude. Let's enjoy this. And ultimately, let's just, let's just treat others with respect. And I think this, this green initiative has just developed off of that same thought process where we just want to treat our planet right and our neighbors right and it, just do the right thing. It, it's, it's simple. It's a, it's a bit of a no-brainer. My dad tells the story a lot about when you brush your teeth, do you turn the water off when you're brushing your teeth or do you just let it run you know, for two minutes? And a lot of people, especially males, will leave it running while you brush your teeth. But if you explain to them, hey, you can save X amount of gallons of water by just turning off the, off the water while you brush your teeth, uh, this is the impact you can have. And when you say that, it's a no-brainer for them because it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And so I think all of our seven, eight projects have been so easy to uh, develop and implement. It's just because all of our team believes it's the right thing to do. Yeah, you know, to piggyback, you know, back, I guess, originally, you know, when you ask about my father, his granddad, you know, he was a pretty simple-minded person. So, uh, and I've tried to teach both Ryan and Dan that same thing. You know, a lot of our foundation are just biblical principles, just do the right thing, integrity, honesty, have fun doing it. You know, so I was kind of taught that as a young child. I tried to do the same thing for the for the boys, and then as Dan was saying, you know, you know, again, what what we're also really wanting to do is is encourage other people. You know, I, I I'm not saying we want to be their daddy, but we want to we want to share. We we hope they would come and emulate us. We're a small organization. We don't really have the financial resources to a point. So we were driven by other means. Mm -hmm. uh, so we really did want to share. The Baldridge really did help me learn how to do things a little bit more systemic. But we, we learn from Baldridge in a systemic way of doing it, but then I take the old principles of all of our, the people that my dad or older people that, like Ryan, uh, Dan was saying, that just wanted to do the right thing. That generation, it was a, you know, they would look, man and I shake a hand and it was a deal mm -hmm. and you know we're, we're not so silly to think we're going to get back to that same type of, uh, of uh, process but from uh, from a love and a respect for one another we're trying to do the same thing with the environment you know Dan has made a reference this generation it's the green generation uh, we hope we encourage other people to to do the same thing or something similar mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I was a uh... And kind of my prep work, I always like to scan the websites and whatnot and couldn't help but notice there was on one page, I think it was, maybe it was talking about, there was like mission and, and then one of them I saw was vision and you guys, you called out Psalm 121 too, I believe it was. So I don't not to ask personal questions or anything like that, but just curious, you know. Well, of, of, well I'm, I'm glad you asked that. Uh, you know, I'm real proud, you know, we're, we're faith-based organization mm -hmm. too and I've told Dan both boys that always put the Lord in there he's 
He's helped us be who we are. But yeah, that's Psalm 121. That's one of my favorite one. And it really talks about, and I've shared this from the boys when they were young, it was shared with me with an employee that used to work with us, an mm-hmm. African-American lady, uh, when I got hurt uh, as a young teenager. And she told me, read Psalm 121. I read it, and I read it a lot now. And it's where you seek uh, help from the Lord. Mm-hmm. And that it doesn't matter what the situation is, you can get help. Mm-hmm. And as I look back, uh, he he has helped me. He's helped Texas nameplate. And that's, that's who we are. Mm-hmm. So it... Seek help, and uh, you know, uh, so it, that's where it came from. Wow. Yeah. You guys, and you know, on that too, you know, and the, my, Dad shared that verse with myself and my brother at an early age, and that's definitely one of my favorite verses. And it, you know, going back to this green deal, you know, in that verse it says, you know, my help comes from the Lord, the Maker of heaven and earth. He, we believe, and like Dad said, we're a faith-based organization. We we believe that, and our team believes, you know, that He is the Maker of heaven and earth. And all like we spoke about earlier, all these resources. He's the Maker of all these resources: the water, mm-hmm. the acid, the metal, the solvent. It's it's we're only glorifying Him by being able to reuse what He created for us. Mm-hmm. So that's when I say it's it's a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. He gave it to us. We're grateful for that. Mm-hmm. Let's glorify Him by just reusing it as much as we can. Well, you guys are doing some amazing work, and uh, I feel really fortunate to have spent a day with you all. And uh, I know our relationship ain't going to end here. Yeah. So yeah. keep up the good work. Um, you know, we've been talking, you know, at lunch and all the rest of it that maybe Gimba Academy needs to get some sustainability courses. And I think I have a couple trainers right here yep. who can help yep. maybe lead yes. the way because yep. I think the world needs it. And uh, I'm willing to do my part, yell help, and we'll, we'll, we'll figure out how to do it We're together. Yeah. Count on us for sure. Thank, thank you, guys. You. Yes, thank you. Right. Right. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Gemba Academy podcast. Now, we invite you to take a no-strings-attached, fully functional test drive of GembaAcademy.com. Gain immediate access to more than a 1,000 Lean and Six Sigma learning resources, all free of charge, at GembaAcademy.com.